Hello well wishers I am back again with an interesting poem in English literature which is very important from the ICSC point of view a poem which you all will be studying in class 9 the name of the poem is Kimble Shanks the railway cat and it is written by T S Eliot now this is not the first time you know that T S Eliot is writing this poem on cats because he had a very close connection with cats during his childhood and this particular poem is a part of his collection old possums book of practical cats it describes the life and duties of skimble shanks a cat who resides on a train and takes care of the various tasks the poem also showcases how skimble shanks is a very diligent and efficient cat he is responsible for keeping the train in order and maintaining its smooth operation Now let us begin our reading of the poem Skimble Shanks. It is divided into 5 stanzas and without much ado, let us begin our reading of stanza 1. Now, please note down the important time at which the poem begins. It is 11:39 at night when the train is about to depart. So the poem tells us the story of Shim- Skimble Shanks. He is a ginger tabby cat who works on a train. as a kind of inspector or a supervisor the name of the train mentioned is the night mail it is ready to leave or depart but it cannot do so because everyone over here is waiting for skimble shanks who will come and ultimately give the green signal to the train you see it is mentioned in double quotations where the passengers are speculating about where has skimble shanks possibly gone the guards the porters the station master's daughter possibly any person who is present on the station is actually awaiting skimble shanks appearance over here but skimble shanks it is said has gone to hunt for the thimble now actually if you see the real meaning of thimble is a kind of a party game in which one person hides a thimble and the other players have to look for it another meaning of a thimble is it is actually a device which is worn on the fourth finger when you are doing needle work so that it doesn't poke your finger right so over here we see that skimble shanks so the mention of the word thimble is just for the sake of rhyming so here itself we see that there is no concrete meaning the words are just randomly put over here showing that this is not a very serious poem written by t s eliot it becomes very necessary to find skimble shanks or the train will not be able to depart the guards the porters the station master's daughter are searching high and low high and low means everywhere for the cat at 11:42 the passengers are frantically in a restless manner awaiting skimble shanks arrival finally they see him appearing from where you know he appears from the luggage van and he is walking in a very relaxed manner look at the contrast everyone is frantic people are just you know looking for him here and there thinking when is skimble shanks going to appear and the cat appears from the rear end or the back end from the luggage van and he is walking towards the engine in a very relaxed manner in stanza 2 we see that skimble shanks has already arrived and through the flash of his glass green eyes he is giving the signal all clear for the train to depart now the phrase glass green eyes is actually a figure of speech called alliteration over here and it is through his passing of the signal that the train is ultimately able to depart it therefore shows the integral role of skimble shanks in the functioning of the train and where do we see the train is heading the train is off at last for the northern part of the northern hemisphere now i will explain this particular phrase a little later towards the end of the video so do wait for that part next in stanza 3 we see how the poet tells us about the activities and duties of the cat skimble over here is assuming the role of a supervisor of the sleeping car express Mind you this is another name which is given to the train and it specifies the type of train it is in our first poem that we had read in the previous video that was a night mail which was actually carrying mails from one part of the country to another crossing the border in this case this is a passenger train and it is a sleeping car express this uh, cat 
supervises the driver, the guards and the bagmen who are playing cards after having finished their duty. Without any bias or discrimination, we see Skimble visits and examines the activities of the travellers in both the first as well as the third class. He has been constantly patrolling and conducts regular examination of the activities on the train which helps him to be in complete control of the train and take immediate action if anything goes wrong. He is very careful and does not even think about winking that is the degree to which he is engrossed in doing his duty. He tries to read the faces of the passengers and ascertain what is going on in the mind of the travellers. We also see how Skimbleshanks expects absolute peace and order on the train. He refuses to accept any kind of hilarity. Now what does hilarity mean over here? Hilarity actually means commotion, amusement involving noisy commotion or riot. He does not want any of this. He wants absolute peace on the train, does not want any kind of disturbance, not for himself, nor for his passengers. Therefore, it tells us that his strong presence and vigilance throughout the journey never goes unnoticed and it also ensures that nothing goes wrong in the train. In this stanza, we see that Skimble Shanks is not only responsible and dutiful, but he is also a very strict supervisor. It is as if you have the principal walking into your room and you cannot budge. Similarly, the passengers are expected to be in extreme discipline when they are on board this train. In stanza 4, we see that when the passengers are going to their respective compartments, they feel very satisfied. You know why? Because the place where they are supposed to sit, their berths are already labelled and they are all clean with folded sheets provided and the floor is absolutely clean. The train satisfies every passenger's requirement in providing dim as well as dark lights. There is a provision also to adjust the speed of the fan. There are basins for passengers to wash their faces and also if they want they can shut the window so that no one catches a cold or flu. In the morning, the guard comes and asks the preference for tea or coffee, weak or strong. Even at this point, it may seem that it is actually the guard who is being considerate and asking the passengers for their preference of beverage but it is actually Skimble Shanks who is behind the guard monitoring the comfort of the passengers. Therefore, when the passengers go to sleep in their cozy berths, Skimble Shanks makes sure that there is no infestation of mice anywhere and the passengers can have a very smooth and comfortable stay during this journey. We now come to the end of the last and final stanza of the poem, Stanza 5. Now this stanza shows the overall outlook of Skimble Shanks. He is always fresh and bright and on duty. Occasionally he has a cup of tea with a few drops of scotch. The mention of the phrase catch a flea over here shows that on certain occasions Skimble Shanks is a little relaxed and casual in carrying out his duties where his attention may be diverted to ordinary things like catching a flea. But there is a twist here. This also shows that Skimble Shanks does not ignore the important as well as the petty or the small things, every detail. Nothing goes unnoticed by Skimble Shanks. He wants everything to run smoothly with absolute perfection. When passengers are fast asleep, as the train is stopping at different stations like Crewe, which is a town in England, Carlisle, a city in England, or Dumfries, a town in Scotland, it is Skimble who is walking up and down the station, meeting the station master. And when the train reaches Gallowgate, a neighbouring city of Glasgow, the passengers do not have to wait because Skimble Shanks has made all the necessary preparations for the passengers. They can easily deboard the train. Now here are the three pictures of the towns and cities mentioned in the poem Dumfries, Carlisle and Crewe and how they look like in the present times. This is actually a picture of the map which traces the route from Crewe in England to Galloway in Scotland. I have made use of the Google map to show you how 
this train is covering this entire distance which will help you for easy reference when you are reading the final stanza of the poem i had mentioned about this in the beginning of the video and here is a picture for you as promised